Lena Marilla appears to have been awaiting your arrival for quite some time. Uh, Claude, where in the world have you been? Did you not receive Alma's summons? Principal Lexentail's research into the accurate, into the R site may finally have borne fruit. We must hurry to the Prima Vista before they embark on some grand and perilous adventure without us. Ride the transport shuttle to the Prima Vista. Um. What? Oh, I have to talk to the gate guard. I knew that. That's a pilot. If you would follow me to the shuttle, good sir. Or the Prima Vista. Lords, Lady Merilla, thank you for answering my summons. Master Garland was kind enough to send for an Archon from Shalian, and I thought it only right that you be present to hear her findings. To be frank, summoning Mikoto was more Yushtola's idea. I simply came along to see what light she could shed on this mystery. I am Mikoto of House Jinba, a Domen. Though through my years in Shalian, oh sorry. Though my years in Shalian have made me a stranger here, you must be Claude's Villiards, fabled deliberator of men, player of false gods, warrior of light. I thought you'd be taller. Wow, rude. If I was an Elizen, would you be saying that? Or Roganen? Uh, let us speak of the crystal. Ahem. The odious, one of but many oversight shards that aided noble Delita's rise to regent. My apologies. The Otis is no ordinary crystal, even discounting its obvious historical importance. The specimen is more than a simple manifestation of elementally aspected energies. It is rather an ethereal lodestone whose facilitation of both the absorption and transmission of distinct frequency. NRR type harmonic vibrations has been observed to promote ethereal amplification. The resultant neuroharmonic disturbance allows for a highly unique emittance of CPR5 waves that Instead of radiating outward with a determined factor of dispersal, instead of r instead resonate inward at a frequency so labored, my estimates place the rate of VRT decay at upwards of several centuries. Though I must admit I lack sufficient variates to complete a truly comprehensive graphical assessment. That was the hardest paragraph I've ever had to read in my life. While that expl may explanation may elicit admiring nods from your professors at the academy, it will earn you only blank looks here. Take a deep breath and try again, this time in a language that a language those of us without the echo might comprehend. <laughs> My apologies, I merely thought. Apologies will see us no nearer to an answer and a simpler explanation will. Simpler, right. Um, Aether is not only the building block of all things material, but those immaterial as well. Thoughts, memories, feelings, one's very will are all understood to be ethereal myth phenomena and can be measured as such, unlike most crystals which can only emit elemental energies. Aurasite is tuned not only to absorb Aether, but Aether specific to the immaterial. That Aether is then stored and multiplied within its crystalline confines until external stimuli precipitate release. I guess it's a little bit clear. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> try again. <laughs> yeah, try again, please. Under appropriate conditions, a strong will or desire can become imprinted upon the aura site and stored until fermentation, at which time the desire becomes manifest. Fermentation? 
What my studious young friend is trying to say is that the odious takes one the deepest fantasies and makes them reality. Yes, yes, that is simpler. You may choose to think of it as a process akin to that of summoning a primal. There being one marked difference, primal summoning requires a supplemental energy source such as a horde of elementally charged crystals, or a site on the other hand has the capacity to serve as its own source of power. We know from the Durai papers that Argath was never king of Ivalis. He was slain in battle during the War of the Lions. Yet the Argath encountered during the recent expedition carried himself as if he had been crowned regent. I believe this was merely the oversight in his position, making men uh, realizing his desire to rule. <clears throat> I am informed that he uttered the same words over and over again for the duration of the confrontation which unfolded. If that is the case, it is possible that... It was not actually Argath who uttered them, but the Oresight itself. If the Durai papers are accurate, Argath was a weak and petty noble who believed that his blood entitled him to power. The Oresight took that belief and twisted it into abomination via clods put to the sword. Then you are saying the crystal could prove a threat? The Oresight armor, and not necessarily Ramza, seem to fare well enough. There is no record of the young regent being manipulated by the artifacts he gathered. In the hands of the just, the Oresight should prove harmless, even beneficial. To paraphrase, it's not the weapon that kills, but the one who wields it. Now, where have I heard that before? Oh yes, it was Emperor Galvis' justification for taking the marvels of Magitech and applying them to the manufacture of arms. Where, after all, was the harm if it allowed him to bring order to the three great continents? You draw an intriguing parallel, Master Garland. The properties of these crystals are so singular, I do begin to wonder if they, like Magitech, are products of science and not nature. That they were created by someone too. But who? What manner of person would even be capable of such a feat? Now that is an interesting question, the answer to which I look forward to hearing. Regrettably, I have pressing matters to attend to elsewhere. Fear not, however, Mikoto's insight will prove far more beneficial than anything I might accidentally contribute. Good day to you all. What I don't understand is, if the Duma was imprinted with Argeth's deepest desires, then whose desires are rattling about inside the Odious? I had the self same question and thus conducted a thorough inspection of the crystal upon my arrival. The results were inconclusive. Traces of ethereal activity were present, but to all intents and purposes, the vessel was empty. Hangman Khan. Empty, but what of the voices I heard? Voices, I heard nothing of the sort. The only voices you heard, Alma, were in your stubborn head. Ramsa, why won't you? Shall we speak of voices then? What of yours, Alma? Our resident voice of dissent. <laughs> you have done naught but question the wisdom of our research from the moment we left Garlemald. Would you put your petty worries above your family's calling? No, I would never. You would never. Then why involve a gossip monger, a goody two-shoes, and th this flying mole? Please tell me you can see that.
Am I interrupting? Oh, please do go on. My acceptance into your fine trips ranks can wait until all have said their piece, Koopa. Guys, get this, this, this. Mont Blanc. The name is Mont Blanc. Denizen of Dalmasca's Desert, seeker of thrills, adventure extraordinaire. But you may call me Mont Blanc Koopa. <laughs> what? <clears throat> Dalmasca has long been known as a melting pot for myriad cultures, where minor races such as the Sikh, the, ban the Banga, and the Vera might live in relative harmony with Hur, Elizan, and others. Yet there is no record of a prominent Mughal population. Most likely because we are neither prominent nor populous. My people are nomadic by nature, ever drawn to the elusive frontier and the freedom she promises, Koopa. A Mughal? Of course I'm a Mughal Kupu. You'd think the adorable wings and the fluffy palm would have given it away. Now about my admission to the Majestic. I will allow no such thing. The Majestic is the Empire's premier theatre company. It will not sully its good name by granting refuge to a fluttering ball of fur. And furthermore, how in the world did this abomination board the Prima Vista in the first place? By means of his wings, were I to guess. As for his admission to our company, I do not seem to recall race, creed, or allegiance on my list of prerequisites, do you? No, father. Very well, then, Mont Blanc. What is it exactly that calls you to the stage, our stage? What else? The Zodiac Brave Story, Cupo. Never before have I witnessed something so amazing, so moving. Sitting, well, technically hovering there in the audience as the story unfolded around me. I knew I was witnessing something special, something positively transcendental, Koopa. It was then that I realized I either had to be part of it or go to my grave a bitter and broken Moogle. So you're just there to watch, pretty much. Birdies. <laughs> was this realization before or after you swore you simply had to become the realm's greatest marauder, Koopa? Ready? how did you... Perhaps you'd have more success at running away if you didn't reveal your grand designs to every other fool you happen to meet, Koopa. Was it not but two score nights ago you took up the axe, Koopa? Now here you are professing your passion for the stage before carving even a single notch in your haft. Do you not remember? To he who churns the butter goes the sweetest bread. But how is one to savor said buttered bread if his head is in the belly of a fearsome beast? You accuse me of giving up when I merely came to the realization that contending would end in failure? Only through a change of course could I reach my final destination, Kupo. And that destination is what? Mummer? Are you sure it's not a geomancer? Arithmetician? Templar? Do you not bother answering, Kupo? We all know you'll be seeing a different tune come Okro. This is where you are mistaking, Hurdy. I was destined to be a thespian. I can feel it in my fur. The role of Del Delicia Delita was made for me. Made for me, Kupo. Kupo, 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 Kupo. Enough. The actors in her company train at the Empire's finest institutes. They represent the pinnacle of the profession not only in Garlemo, but across the entire world. A vagrant Batmole like you could never hope to share a stage with such artists, let alone play the part of a hero like Delita. You yourself admitted you were too craven to face a solitary beast. How do you imagine you would fare against a pack of theater critics? Any troop would need proof of valor before it could even consider. Craven, call me a cheat and call me a cur, but do not, sir, call me Craven. I accept your challenge. Slay but one foul beast by mine own hand, and the Majestic Theatre Company will accept me into, into, into its ranks, Koopo. <clears throat> Wait, I issued no such. You're all here. You are all here, witnesses, Koopo. When I return with the head of a terrible beast in my gore stained hands, you will be honor bound to welcome me, Mont Blanc the Mummer, into the fabled ranks of the Majestic. Good day. He's dead. Wonderful. What do we do now? What do we do? We do nothing. If that Batmole wishes to throw himself on the horns of a stampede, stampeding Zoe, I will not stand in his way. 
I believe the proper term of derogation is Molbat, and I should warn you, Moogles do not take kindly to those who use it. Why must you always put yourself above others, brother? Did you not learn nothing from Argat's wretched example? Montblanc would never have set off on this fool's errand had you not made the challenge. If anything befalls my brother, his blood will be on your hands. Bloods, you are the only one among us capable of locating Montblanc and preventing disaster. On behalf of my brother, I beg your assistance. My brother can be rather simple-minded when it comes to such matters. Thinking to impress the Warrior of Light and his companions, Montblanc would likely choose the scene of your recent exploits to prove his worth. Meaning Rabinaster, if I'm not mistaken. Pardon my language, but that Ramza really is an incurable little prick, is he not? How dare you speak to his sister and the Mughal in that manner? I couldn't decide which was worse, the things he said or the way he the principal sat back and let him say them. But I suppose it is none of our concern. For now, let us concentrate on the task at hand. Finding the Moogle before he does something we all regret. Let's say we start nearby. Pier 2, perhaps? Alright, let's go to Pier 2. Can I go back this way? Am I interrupting? Oh, please do go on. My acceptance into your fine trips ranks can wait until all have said their piece, Koopa. Guys, get this, this, this. Montblanc. The name is Montblanc. Denizen of Dalmasca's Desert, seeker of thrills, adventurer extraordinaire. But you may call me Montblanc, Koopa. <laughs> what? <clears throat> Dalmasca has long been known as a melting pot for myriad cultures, where minor races such as the Sikh, the, ban the Banga, and the Vera might live in relative harmony with Hur, Elizan, and others. Yet there is no record of a prominent Mughal population. Most likely because we are neither prominent nor populous. My people are nomadic by nature, ever drawn to the elusive frontier and the freedom she promises, Koopa. A Mughal? Of course I'm a Mughal Kupu. You'd think the adorable wings and the fluffy palm would have given it away. Now about my admission to the Majestic. I will allow no such thing. The Majestic is the Empire's premier theatre company. It will not sully its good name by granting refuge to a fluttering ball of fur. And furthermore, how in the world did this abomination board the Prima Vista in the first place? By means of his wings, were I to guess. As for his admission to our company, I do not seem to recall race, creed, or allegiance on my list of prerequisites, do you? No, father. Very well, then, Montblanc. What is it exactly that calls you to the stage, our stage? What else? The Zodiac Brave Story Cubo. Never before have I witnessed something so amazing, so moving. Sitting, well, technically hovering there in the audience as the story unfolded around me. I knew I was witnessing something special, something positively transcendental, Koopa. It was then that I realized I either had to be part of it or go to my grave a bitter and broken Moogle. So you're just there to watch, pretty much. Birdies. <laughs> was this realization before or after you swore you simply had to become the realm's greatest marauder, Koopa? Ferdy, how did you... Perhaps you'd have more success at running away if you didn't reveal your grand designs to every other fool you happen to meet, Koopa. Was it not but two score nights ago you took up the axe, Koopa? Now here you are professing your passion for the stage before carving even a single notch in your haft. Do you not remember? To he who churns the butter goes the sweetest bread. But how is one to savor said buttered bread if his head is in the belly of a fearsome beast? You accuse me of giving up when I merely came to the realization that contending would end in failure? Only through a change of course could I reach my final destination, Kupo. And that destination is what? Mummer? Are you sure it's not a Geomancer? 
Arithmetician, Templar, do you not bother answering Kupo? We all know you'll be seeing a different tune come Okro. This is where you are mistaking, Hurdy. I was destined to be a thespian. I can feel it in my fur. The role of Del Delita was made for me. Made for me, Kupo. Kupo, 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 enough. The actors in our company train at the Empire's finest institutes. They represent the pinnacle of the profession not only in Garlemo, but across the entire world. A vagrant Batmole like you could never hope to share a stage with such artists, let alone play the part of a hero like Delita. You yourself admitted you were too craven to face a solitary beast. How do you imagine you would fare against a pack of theater critics? Any troop would need proof of valor before it could even consider. Craven, call me a cheat and call me a cur, but do not, sir, call me Craven. I accept your challenge. Slay but one foul beast by mine own hand, and the majestic theater company will accept me into, into, into its ranks, Kupo. <clears throat> Wait, I issued no such. You're all here. You are all here, witnesses, Kupo. When I return with the head of a terrible beast in my gore stained hands, you will be honor bound to welcome me, Mont Blanc the Mummer, into the fabled ranks of the majestic. Good day. He's dead. Wonderful, what do we do now? What do we do? We do nothing. If that Batmole wishes to throw himself on the horns of a stampede stampeding Zoe, I will not stand in his way. I believe the proper term of derogation is Mole Bat, and I should warn you, Moogles do not take kindly to those who use it. Why must you always put yourself above the others, brother? Did you not learn nothing from Argus' wretched example? Mont Blanc would never have set off on this fool's errand had you not made the challenge. If anything befalls my brother, his blood will be on your hands. Bloods, you are the only one among us capable of locating Mont Blanc and preventing disaster. On behalf of my brother, I beg your assistance. My brother can be rather simple-minded when it comes to such matters. Thinking to impress the Warrior of Light and his companions, Mont Blanc would likely choose the scene of your recent exploits to prove his worth. Meaning Rebanaster, if I'm not mistaken. Pardon my language, but that Ramser really is an incurable little prick, is he not? How dare he speak to his sister and the Moogle in that manner? I couldn't decide which was worse, the things he said or the way he th the principal sat back and let him say them. But I suppose it is none of our concern. For now, let us concentrate on the task at hand. Finding the Moogle before he does something we all regret. Let's say we start nearby. Pier 2, perhaps? Alright, let's go to Pier 2. Can I go back this way? I have to go over there. Okazaki Holstery? Yeah. Yokaze Holstery. Yokaze. The Falcon Porter tells us that he set a traveling blacksmith away to Yansha, another belt pass. And why would that be of interest to us, you ask? Because said paddler of iron and steel was seen to be carrying a bag stuffed to the brim with, and I quote, albino mole fur and purple bat wings. Mont Blanc. Not that we look like that, Koopa. The quickest route into Dalmasca is via the One River and its western tributaries. If Mont Blanc is bound for Remonaster, he will seek passage from the Glittering Basin. Goes from the glittering basin. Uh. Maybe I have to kill these things.
I probably have to kill these things. I think I have to kill these things. There's one over there I have to kill too. Bitch from what blank. There we go. Done. I had to save him. From the chocobos. Mont Blank, what were you thinking? Have you any idea what you put your other brother through? He has been worried sick. Both Herdy and Ramza were right all along. I am a failure, a flop, a flailing, flapping, foppish failure, Cooper. How could I play the part of a hero if I cannot even ruffle the feathers of a single measly bird? The audience would see right through me like the spineless jellyfish I am. Now wait, Mont Blanc. Not everyone can be a hero. Not even the worst hero. Mo not even most heroes. Yes, the bard sing of the man who deals the final blow, but what of his card of loyal companions? Do you think Delita united Iblis on his own? Do you think Claude's here was alone when he liberated Alamigo? You're never alone on the battlefield. Not all wars are won on the front lines. Yeah, I like that. But of course they are not. Every campaign needs its brilliant architect. The mastermind who moves the pieces across the board. I, Mont Blanc, can be the mastermind. That was quick. <laughs> Let us not dwell on the details. The day is saved. Mont Blanc has escaped. Stand scratch or sense to show for it. We should return to the Prima Vista before our luck runs out. Yeah, Meteor Summoning Chocobos. Oh god, let me out! Return to the Prima Vista. Gotta go back to Gagane. Oh god. What are they doing here? Please, the ship is a place of peace. Release my sister or you will answer to me. When the cat's away. Put that damn little thing down, Ramza. You're not helping matters. We have no quarrel with you or yours. We only seek aid in finding our leader, Bagamnan. You seek our help. You who threatened to kill my father, who stole his work and made fools of us all? Never. Silence, Ramza. They have armor. We will hear what they have to say. As I said, we have no quarrel with you. We only did what was necessary to secure an audience. We surrender our weapons and offer your journal as an act of good faith. This is all rather a lot to digest, but your claims do coincide with what we have learned about the aura side. He's got a third eye, I just realized. You're saying that Krista did something to her captain? After being emptied of Argot's will, the Duma thought that of another to sate its appetite for Aether. You're saying that Crystal ate our captain? Not his body, no. Only his soul. His soul? 
Tell me, what in your opinion was your leader's deepest desire? What was it that he longed for above all else in the world? Why waste your breath reasoning with these lizards? They showed themselves for the beast that they are when they put a knife to your throat. First small bats, now lizards. This one's tongue is pure poison. Right? Dude, Ramza, control yourself, mate. The boy can call us what he pleases. For our past failings, we deserve no better. Your failings? 30 summers have come and gone, yet not a night goes by that I do not wake and sweat at the memory. We were fu uh, fusilers in the Damascan army stationed in the royal stronghold at Albina. Albina Fortress was reputed to be impenetrable. Its fall to the <clears throat> Fourth Legion proved a turning point in the Imperial Campaign, dealing a crushing blow to the Almaskan morale and ultimately marking the beginning of the Kingdom's End. Ah, Bagaman was our captain, and once it was clear that the day would not be ours, Prince Ralzer, commander of the garrison, had now been at Tassim with one final mission. Our unit was to escort his highness's twin sister, the Princess Aishalia, away from the fortress and thence to safety, but things did not go as planned. I still remember the words she uttered as she lay dying in the captain's arms, but a stone's throw from where the Garam Scythe waterway drains into the sea. Even as the fog of death descended upon her, she smiled and told us, the very people who had failed her to survive for as long as even a single Dalmascan stood, our nation would never truly perish. It should not have been us who survived, but failing by failing to protect our charge, we betrayed the princess and her memory and brought shame upon our race. So yes, we are not but cold-blooded lizards deserving of whatever scorn you deign to heap on us. I think we may safely assume a deep-seated hatred towards the invaders of his homeland, coupled with self-loathing born from a sense of powerlessness. The darkness that lurks in the heart of Bagaman is little different from which, from that which drove Argath, the self-same emotions that were to nourish the Duma. Speaking, stop speaking in riddles, Charlian. She's saying your brave captain will eventually turn into a monster, or rather, more of one. Charlian lies. What they say is true. If we do not find Bagaman and the Duma soon, none of us are safe. Present company included. <clears throat> you have any idea where he might have gone? Any at all? Wait, look at this. Something has been added to the final page of my journal. Then the captain must have put it there, only he had access to it, until we found it in the pack he left behind, that is. Is this Dalmaskin? Indeed it is. It says, Ridorana. The lighthouse? Why would he write that? And in the old man's journal, no less. Yeah, I know, I'm losing frames. That's having a heart attack, sorry. There's a place on the Valnard Sea, far to the south of Rabanasa, where the ocean tumbles into a gripping maw more than a mom across. The Ritter on a cataract. I'm losing a lot of frames right now, sorry. Uh, legend would have us believe that it's the entrance to the Hell of Water. Many a scholar seeking to prove otherwise has descended into the chasm. Some even by airship, but not a one has returned.
In order to address an issue causing difficulties when entering instances via Duty Finder, we were performing an emergency maintenance on the Duty Finder server. Oh, how long is that going to be? I must admit to knowing little of Ritorana save that which Lady Mikoto shared with us. Before we expend valuable time and resources traveling to so remote a place, I must review my notes and see if there's any mention of the Abyss. We shall send for you as soon as we learn all of interest. No idea. My power, my pleasure, my pain. Something is on principle, geno principle genomics is mine. Unfortunately, it's not what you think it is. Ridorana is proving to be quite the enigma. With every answer comes countless new questions. This may take longer than I expected. You are doubtless eager to know why I requested your presence. Our resident dramaturge mentioned there was something he wished to ask of you. As my work here is far from complete, I wondered if you might not indulge the man while you wait. Dramaturge. There's few so low to take the risk than ventures without a quest. For shorn of work to give them worth, they soon become a source of mirth. Quoth the man idling in an airship. Yeah. Oh, they're done already? <laughs> okay. Touche, I shall leave you to your devices then. Wait, what? <laughs> I said the wrong thing. I shouldn't have uh, made fun of him. Wow, okay. Adventure will find me in time. Oh, but it has, my friend. It has. My colleagues tell me that if one hand in this land ever needs an item fetch, that you are the man to speak to. I find this philanthropic compulsion fascinating. And so in the interest of research into my next play, let's say I seek to put said compulsion to the test. Assuming you're a game, of course. Bring me a bottle of wine, but not just any wine, make it rose steamed and make it Aorzin. I've had my fill of the bitter blends offered here in the east. I'm not a bully. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. Where to start? Oh, if only there were some so some port uh, where thirsty Aorzins went for their wine, you would surely be there speaking with its foremost blind Valafel in winter and not here with me. Dude, this guy is speaking in rhymes. <clears throat> Speak with Shamanila in the wine port. Alright, I gotta go to the wine port. Right? Soy and spice sprinkled with a subtle soup con of the steppe. You have traveled far, my friend. What is it you seek here in wine port? A rose-steamed wine. You would be hard-pressed to find a wine that did not display some hint of rose, so we can assume that your client was not referring to a desired bouquet. Perhaps a name or a label or... A bottle, yes. I seem to recall a certain vintage rose solid in the crystal bottles with a single red rose on the label. Alas, I have nothing as rare amongst my personal stock. As for who might, well, there's always Berglayant, I suppose. Okay. <coughs> Only an uncultured fool would select a wine based solely on its bottle. As it happens, however, said fool would be undeservingly rewarded with one of uh, Vilbrand's best wines were he to select a vintage Sud Vindia. <laughs> Not that your client would have the palate to properly appreciate its depth and complexity. But let us dispense with the pretense. You are the fool in question and do not bother to deny it. A fool who has aimed too high, one of your standing could live a thousand lifetimes and still not amass the wealth required to purchase even an empty bottle. Rude. Price is no object, is it? Even if I believed you, and I do not, I have a reputation to uphold as a vintner, a vintner and viculturist. Were my clients to learn I was peddling my choice of my collection to the likes of you, they would never do business with me again. 
What am I even doing? Alright, just to see the back of you, I shall do you the kindness of directing your steps unto one who might take pity on your plight, assuming he does not find amusement. In it, Master Ger... Gergeruju of Costa del Sub, but do not tell him I sent you. Bloody doing these... But it is always a pleasure, and I didn't mean that. My ladies informed me you come inquiring a about Lola after a bottle of Sud. I can't even say this. Sud Vianja. But I told them they must be mistaken. Not even you would be foolish enough to think you could. Oh, you are serious. Ah, but you do realize one could purchase an entire estate and miss for the price of a single bottle, or five estates for the price of five bottles, which happens to be the number of bottles of Sud Vija I have in my collection. I am not an unreasonable man. Let none say the venerable Gurguruju does not value a friendship as deep as the one you and I have forged. So in my boundless generosity, I offer you the opportunity for a trade. A bottle of vintage Zudvunji Vujinra for a mere magnum of fine Dalmaskin. Never heard of the stuff, and I thought I was talking to a fellow con connoisseur. I pity the poor Vintner back in Whitemort who will have to educate you. Until then, my friend. The offer stands, huh? Um, I guess we're going back to Wineport. Uh, first, Sud Bunja and Aldo Mask and Wine. Might I interest you in an age? This is ridiculous. <laughs> They're just getting me to trade wines. No, I thought not. Well, then you have your work cut out for you. There was a time though mask and wine was fairly easy to procure, even here in Vilbrand, but that was before the Empire raised the better part of the kingdom, vineyards and all. If there are any surviving bottles, it would be those that were exported before the Imperial invasion over 30 summers past, though I have not encountered any in a decade or more, either at auction or in private hands. Uh, collectors are covetous creatures. If one were to have somehow acquired a bottle, there is little chance he would... Willingly part with such a treasure, which leaves only those brought over by few Dalmascan refugees who fled to Eorzea. <sighs> Where is that? South, okay. Hello? What's up, buddy? Oh, here's another quest. Can't, can't sleep. They won't let me. The midges won't let me. The buzz and they scream. Alright, you need to you need to calm down there, mate. I got you, bro. Flash suit. You, I know you. You were here before. You sent away the midgets. They came back, though. They always come back. They mock me, tell me I can never go home. I just want to go home. I cannot stand it here anymore. I don't think I've ever been here. Let me comfort you, buddy. You're okay. You're okay dressed. I got you. Wine, my wine, my wine? My wife loved wine. We would drink a glass, a glass of Valens every night before sunset. She would always keep the cork. I always thought that odd. What good is a cork? Toss it in the middle heap along with the bottle, I'd say. But she, she. Search nearby for an empty wine bottle. Uh, okay. It's gonna be under the house, isn't it? Yeah, of course. Of course it is. Though you may find several empty wine bottles amongst the rubbish, one in particular calls out to you. Take it to the Shamani Lomani to confirm its origin. Take them to Shamani. Okay, we're going to wine port. <clears throat> uh, how's it dress? I do hope your visit did not disquiet the poor soul.
So you brought me an empty bottle. What is this? The cork remains in place. That is the most fortunate. If an adequate seal was made, there may still be traces of the wine within, may I? Yeah, take it in. Flamboyant yet elegant, a thought-provoking blend of kokuru beans and cinnamon with just a hint of, is that rosemary? A veritable kaleidoscope of both opulence and refinement. Log has it been since I last encountered a... Bu what? Bouquet of such complexity, yet I recall it as if it were yesterday. Without question, this bottle once held a Dalmaskin Liamond red by the name of Valens. To think I would have the opportunity to experience it, experience it again after so many summers. I suspect Master Ger Geruju will not be as satisfied with a sniff as I. Now, one without scruples might see the empty bottle as the basis for a ruse. One man's ruse is another man's keikaku. What are you doing here, Hancock? Over the years, I have had numerous dealings with the Lord of Costa del Sol, and while he is many things, an expert on wines is not one of them. Not that it would matter if he were, men of his standing invariably find more joy in boasting of their acquisitions than in consuming them. In all likelihood, Master Gergaruji will never even open the bottle, rendering the provenance of its contents part practically irrelevant. But where are my manners? These forays back to these forays back to Western climes always bring out the barbarian in me. It is a pleasure, Claude. Lest you wonder at my presence here, my employers seek promise in the Hingan wine trade and desire the establishment of a viable route twixt east and west. I am come to see their plan to fruition. But returning to your dilemma, I believe that then I may be I may be of assistance. I just so happen to have my own personal several sample of bottles of Hingan wine made with grapes similar to those once found in Damascus. For a close acquaintance, I would be more willing than. I would more than willing to part with one that he might fill his empty vessel. That would be unjust. As a maker of wine, I cannot allow it. Master Gurguruju has cozened more of his clans than he can count. How do you think the man has amassed his fortune by playing fair? Would that the world were thus? But I am here to tell you it's not. So it is decided then. We shall employ deceit as a morale, as a our morally justified means to a happy end. Wait, this is a fool's errand. Let us be glad our quarry is a fool himself. Now, if you will excuse me, I must go and tell the gentle citizens of Wineport why they should be drinking Hingen. Good day. <laughs> okay. Deliver the bottle of dust to Gurguruji and Casa del Sol. By the gods, you actually found one, a bottle of Dalmaskin wine. Oh ho, we must uncork it right away. Eamon de Valens. Or at least it appears that way. Yes, a lush bouquet of herbaceous dignification coupled with earthen undertones and uh, so forth. In short, the very epitome of a Dalmaskin red. Yes, you have outdone yourself this time, Claude. And a promise is a promise, ladies. The bottles of Sud Bianja, if you please. Take whatever you fancy except for the one with the rose. That is my favorite, or whichever you fancy. All of them.
They delivered a bottle of Sud Valdir to the wandering dormitory of the Prima Vista. Now we're going back. Okay. Going back. Gotta go to Kugani. What <laughs> <coughs> about? They say a rose is a rose is a rose, so tell me, adventure, is that a rose in your pocket or are you simply here for small talk? That's a rose in my pocket. A vintage wine so rare and so expensive, you can't help but stop and wonder why you just don't drink it yourself and give them only that bottle of... right? You'll be fine with no mask in red. A bottle of vintage Sud Vianja? You never cease to amaze me. What is most amazing is your impeccable sense of timing. Today marks the 12th anniversary of the day I met my dear wife. And if there was one thing she loved more than wine, it was roses. Would that she were here today too. Aww. Ah, uh, but I guess my wife is very much alive. In fact... She's been here with us all along. Darling, would you care to join us? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god for me how thoughtful but did you forget the most painful gift of all of course not uh huh Change of glamours real quick. <clears throat> Bacon bread, the perfect companion to a perfect wine for my perfect companion. Bacon bread, the perfect companion to a perfect wine for my perfect companion. This guy is a uh, genius. Oh, darling. I think this might be our best anniversary yet. They played out better than I imagined. I suppose I have you to thank, Adventure. Though it was the bacon bread that sealed the... Ah, uh, yes. Is that Principal Genomus I hear calling? Perhaps he's made some progress with his research and requires your assistance. You had best not keep him waiting. <laughs> I just did... That was long for a bloody... errand to run while these guys were figuring stuff out. I hope these past few turns of the sun have proved as productive for you as they have for us. We have much to share desire. Genomus and his son have completed their investigation into Ridorana. Ridorana is the name of both a massive gap in the southern Valnard Sea and the lighthouse once manned by the Royal Damascan Navy to prevent ships from succumbing to the cataract's currents. I stress once manned as the tower has lain empty since its candle keeps abandoned their post after the fall of Rebanaster. If Pharaoh's Sirius offers any indication of what can befall a lighthouse in the absence of its caretakers. Yes, but the real question is how all of the ties in with evolution legend. A cursory examination of the Zodiac Brave story reveals no mention of a Ridorana. Yet it seemed foolish to assume that a name could not change in the century since the tale was writ. So I thought to cross-reference text on modern is Il Sabardian history with our translation of the Durai papers. 
And after an exhaustive re-examination of my ancestors' notes, I discovered that there was not a single entry on Ritorana. And while mention of the Valnir here was abundant, I found no reference whatsoever to any cataract or lighthouse within its waters. Ramses' discovery prompted me to examine the mystery from a different perspective. What if there were no mystery at all? What if all the time of Delicious Rise, the Chasm did not yet exist? There is more, but only a visit to the lighthouse will enable us to confirm our theories with any certainty. Guess we're going to the lighthouse. The Ritorana Lighthouse lies far from civilization. You would be wise provision for the trip here in Hingashi. Adventure usually comes prepared. I shall return soon. Always comes prepared, of course. Like it has a bloody stadium on its <laughs> on top of it. That's sick. I forgot where we saw this. The read around a lighthouse. Ba, ba, ba. Damn. Like a bloody city made into a tower. Something is very wrong here. Perhaps it's best if we split our fellowship into two parties, one to delve into the tower's depths and one to observe from afar. As acting expedition subleader, I appoint you captain of the first. You may use the spyglass to aid in your search for the missing lizard. Damn it, brother, where are you? We need to turn this up. The location appears to offer an adequate view. Climb up and scan the area for any signs of Bagamnan. Okay, find him before it's too late. There he is. Found him, let me see. He needs our help. Yeah, he looks kind of weak. Or he's got stomach pains. Prince Razzler. Razzler, Princess Ashila, I know you cannot forgive me. 
Nor should you. It's all my fault. I could not save you. Could not save anyone. Anyone but myself. I'm so sorry. The gunman, wait. Oh god. Traders, have you no pride? You treat with the very man who laid waste to our homeland. Fred, you are mistaken, brother. There are no Imperials here. We've come to help. Oh, rip. I know what I see. My own kin sided with the enemy. How dare you stay in my audience with the princess. The Duma. Yeah, it's that thing. It was him, Kupo. It's showing him what he wants to see. Which murderous Oh god. On fire? Oh wow. Oh, did he do something about it? I did something about it. The gunman! So this is the end. Cite the word, satisfy the covenant. Relinquish thy soul unto me and be granted that which thou dearest, desirest most in all the world. Sword in hand, a warrior clutches stone to breast. Look at me, brother, look at me. In sword etched, he has fading memories. Don't you die, not yet. In stone, his tempered ill. We promised we'd all go together when our time came. You can't leave us here. By sword attested, by stone revealed. That light, where have I seen it before? Oh no. Oh god. Whatever you are doing, you need to leave the lighthouse right away. Right away, do you hear? <laughs> and here I thought we were going right into there straight away. <gasps> uh. It is as we feared then. Baganma's soul is lost. Annihilation. A solid plan of action must be defied before facing the Banga transformed. Much as I wish it were otherwise, I fear Baganman is beyond saving. Uh, yet we cannot suffer what is left of him to become a distraction. Fathers, now not the time to abandon this quest. We are meddling with forces beyond. Enough, Alma. We adults are talking. 
While Claude was searching for the lizard, I inspected an area of exposed foundation at the base of the lighthouse. And? And you were right, Father. The lighthouse is built squarely atop the ruins of what can only be the clockwork city of Gog. The what work city of who? According to the Zodiac Brave story, the Clockwork City of Gog was a metallic metropolis wherein airships, automata, and other technological marvels of the age were first conceived. Little is said about its location, however, said that it was far away. While the Durai papers do not say a great deal more, they do mention that the land upon which the legendary city was built was severely limited, an inconvenience that forced its inhabitants to build up rather than out. Which led me to ask myself, what if the reason land was limited was because the land in question was an island? But that still would not explain the omission of the cataract. It is inconceivable that the authors would neglect to mention so prominent a landmark had it existed. And then I found it, a lone passage regarding Gog's fall. While the particulars were missing, it appears the city was abandoned after an explosion left half of it in ruin. I believe that this explosion may have undermined a portion of the seabed. It need only have been a small area at first, one that could well have gone unnoticed during the exodus. As time passed over, the waters would have continued to wear away at the rock, slowly widening the gap until well, until what uh, we have what lies beneath us today. That would explain why there is no mention of Rita Runner prior to the present era. Come, Father. Will you not tell them the rest of the possibility that we Garlands are descendant in part from the displaced citizens of Gaug? It would explain how the Empire was able to forge its armies of iron even before the discovery and application of Allegan technology. And it may also explain why the legend of Ivalis has resonated with our people for centuries, despite the fact that the Lost Kingdom was, as far as we can tell, in quite a different corner of the world. An interesting if somewhat ambitious theory, but to return to your original claim, it is your belief that the Ritter Runner Lighthouse stands atop what is left of... That necklace, where did you get it, girl? This is my mother's. Oh, it was my mother's. Your mother's? It was my late wife's most cherished possession, why do you ask? Bagaman had a talisman he would wear beneath his jerkin. He refused to take it off even when bathing. He said it was special. I only saw it a few times, but it looked exactly like the one your daughter wears. And what are you implying, Lizard? That my sister stole it? Or my late mother? Neither. I spoke of their similarity. That is all. Dude, Rams is a... Can you believe the nerve of this boy? Enough, Ramza. Our guests are merely concerned for the well-being of their kin. But what of our kin? What of them, Ramza? Do you imagine our kin to be better than theirs in some way? Or anyone else's for that matter? I apologize, Father. We have but one purpose, son, and that is to prove the existence of Ivalis and clear our family's name. Do not allow anger or hate to lead you from that path. Now we have lost we have a lost city to explore. Oh my god, finally. Oh.